Okay, so there we go. we are all had a, another coat of gloss right the way over it just to really protect it. Seal down those decals because obviously we're going to come along with weathering wash now and what we don't want to happen is for the actual wash to get underneath the carrier film and sort of bleeds underneath because once it's under the carrier film it's almost impossible to get rid of it. Okay, so that just protects all your decals and absolutely everything else like that. So what we're going to do now is pop the wash on. So we're going to be using the Flory Models Dark Dirt Wash. <laughs> to be honest, I've already got a little bit in the cap here, we just have a little bit more. Okay, pour it in. Okay, just taking a bit of a brushful. And we're just gonna plaster it absolutely everywhere on the model. Okay, so don't think it's just around panel lines and things like that. This is gonna go absolutely everywhere over everything. What this will do is grime everything down just give it that sort of natural, sort of dirty look, do all the metal areas and absolutely everywhere with it. Okay, avoid getting it down intakes, but obviously we want to do these doors. Okay, so they look the part. If you get it where it bubbles up, just add a couple more bits of washing up liquid into it. Okay, and just generally working around. Do tops, bottoms, everything else like that. Okay, I'll just do this bit. And then when you're around these front areas, just making sure you go everywhere. Make sure you go over the glass, the roof, because what it will do, it should grime absolutely everything down and just give it a little bit better sort of look to it all. What you need to do is leave this on until it totally dries. Don't try and take it off when it's still wet otherwise what's going to happen is you're going to cause little clean spots okay let's get it back we can do this tail as well just carry this over okay so that is it absolutely everywhere on the model so as you see you can probably see without handling it too much pretty nasty pretty grimy okay both sides so what we want to do now is leave that to one side just to totally go off as I say make sure you do get absolutely everywhere you don't want no clean spots on this whatsoever just cleans up with normal water very straightforward same time we spoke about it briefly earlier, we were talking about the weapons fit. I'm going to keep this one very, very mild. So actually what we're going to do, we're just going to have two Sparrow missiles, which we've put together just here. We're going to have them on the front, okay, and we're going to have two Sidewinders in the outer rails uh, on the station as well. So it's only going to be carrying four missiles and the center line tank. So that's all we've done. At a later date, we can obviously add the Mark 82s to it. I've seen various reference shots of it, and it seems to be carrying... Two sparrows, two sidewinders, centerline tank, that's it. No outer wing pods at all. Okay, certainly not the fuel tanks. Um, it has also, there's lots of references where it's showing it carrying the uh, triple ejector racks or tiers with Mark 82s. It seems to be the sort of standard fit this jet had back in the day. So I'm going to sort of try and recreate that a little bit, although I'm not going to put a bomb load on it quite yet. Might put it on in the future uh, for something that I've got plans for this particular one, but certainly at the moment we're just going to keep it all in. So once it's all gone nicely, we should end up with something else like this. These are the tailplanes, and I've done a little bit of weathering on these. Um, and as you can probably see, we've got some staining and some scuffing. That's just the wash and a little bit of staining, which we're going to show you about in a moment. But what we need to do is for this to totally dry off before we sort of push through with everything else and there's some more weathering to come. So we'll let that dry and then we can get it off and we can get with post shading, post weathering and making our way and making it look grimy, heavy and then getting the flat coat on, unmasking and putting together. Okay, you've seen me do this a million times before, but we'll just do a quick recap. Basically, make sure the wash is completely dry. If it's moist anywhere, 
okay, just don't go near it. Because what happens is, if you try and wipe it off too soon, the bits in the panel line will still be wet and it just gets sucked out of it with your paper towel as you work your way through. And remember, as long as it's totally dry, what you go over, it will come off. Because I know a lot of people say, oh, it's stained, it's done everything. The only way it can stain is if it actually gets into the paintwork. It says, you know, easiest way, if you put it onto a rough surface, such as worktop, stuff like that, it wipes away every single time. It'll work, wipe off of everything as long as the surface is completely dry. Now, the bottom here is the rough old bit. Okay, we know it's got a texture down here, but really that's gonna to work to our advantage. Usual thing, if you do it dry, you can scrub off and leave this sort of dirt, grime texture that perhaps you may want or you may not, okay? By just rubbing, you can literally just do it. And literally, just things like moisture off the breath is enough to take a little bit more because all you're doing rehydrating the clay and it uh, comes off now personal choice on this obviously you know from my point of view i want this to be worn but not abused is my normal saying for it so what we're going to do wet the cloth off the back of the arm so you don't take too much with it and then what we do we just gently wipe away now don't try and take it all off on one pass just take your time with it working through Okay, and just start taking off gentle bits first. And just working your way through. Okay, so then obviously the wetter your cloth, as you can see, the more you'll take off. The drier your cloth, the more you leave on. So depending on how dirty and grimy you want it, obviously these outer wing tips are pretty clean on these things. And they tend to get more grimy the, the closer you get in. But you can use this weathering to your advantage. Okay, so perhaps you want some good texture down in the middle here. Probably not quite as much as that. But you see, you can just rubbing through to give you that sort of nice grimy look. The more you wet the cloth, the more it comes off, you see. So you can take it off to be pretty clean. literally working right the way through and remember you can take it from one area and transfer some staining so we've got it on here as you can see it's pretty dirty here so you can actually rub it back in get it to go into the texture like here we want it to be quite grimy under here all right something like this now top side obviously it's not quite as much we're going to post shade all along here so don't worry too much about it but again we just take the cloth And to start with, we're just going to lightly take the first coat off because I don't want to take it all off. I just want to take it off in stages, but because it's quite glossy, we've got onto it. It'll come off very, very easily. Okay, so we're just going to take a little bit down the front here, clean these leaving edges. Just going right over. Now remember, in things like right angles, stuff like that, if you just take a cotton bud, we have one here, tease it out of your teeth a little bit, and just get in these corners, and it'll get rid of any, perhaps you've got, let's say, dodgy joins, it'll show them up, okay? So if you just cotton bud in there, you can just eke them out a little bit. And there we go, that's that wing off. But you see, it stays in the panel lines, breaks it up, works with the sort of the pre-shading we had on there. But as you work your way around up to everywhere, perhaps you want to take more on, more off. And then you can always come back with these dirty ones we've got like here, and you can actually add it back on a little bit. You can put some grind, some streaking in there, and things like that. So I'm going to carry on getting it all off of absolutely everywhere on this one. We'll come back and we can do a little bit of post-shading. Okay, so this is where the fun bit is. Um, I've already started on this one laying it down because it's quite a, a long, laborious job. So I'll finish off the bottom and then I can show you the top with it. What we've got down here is a very, very heavily thinned black paint. So all we've got is a normal flat black, popped in the colour cut, and then this is probably 90%, probably 85, 90% thinners to paint. Good old mix up, little colour cut. Now you might be at it, normally when I spray, you hear it loud and clear. That's it. 
but all I do. This pressure is right down to around about 10 psi, okay? Very heavily thinned, and all we're doing is literally just picking out what I call points of interest, okay? So you're just checking your flow, and we've got some dark areas, and all you try and do, use your references if you like, but use your little artistic licenses with this, and what we're doing is popping down that's where it's got some hydraulic leaking, some streaking, okay? And what we're trying to do is just build up layers. So obviously down here we've got a mixture going on now of like the wash, um, certainly. We've also got a mixture of um, pre-shading gone down there as well. So this is what you're post-shading. So this is where you sort of take your pre-shading as a cue and add to it. So as you can probably see here, I'm dragging back some of these marks. Now some of these little hatches, okay, just gonna get a little bit more. It's just a case of building it up nice and slow, taking our time with it, okay. So some areas might be quite clean. You might be able to see, obviously I'm focusing quite heavily on this bottom part, but certainly the rest of it. But little things like these outer areas, every now and again, just literally, Got some here. Clean off your needle, flow through completely, okay? Empty out your airbrush, because then you can start working your way around. Just little things, so, you know, up here we've got a situation where we've got, turning up the airbrush just a touch, taking it back down. Okay, we've got, a, sorry, I'm having a little trouble, I'm trying to fix the airbrush. The only trouble we have in a Mac valve on here is that what can happen is, you might see, you knock it with your hand. So sometimes it's not the best white place to have it. Anyway, getting back. So we're thinking, we've got the attachment points here. So they're gonna have a little bit. We've got some streaking coming off of this area. We've got vents down the front here. We've got around here, this undercarriage. We've got some more vents down the back. Obviously the front of the aircraft, we haven't got much going on down here, but certainly we're just trying to any areas, perhaps got little vents coming out. And we're just walking out grime and dirt as we go through. So we're just trying to pick out, and then what we're doing, just randomizing, going through, covering decals and everything else as we go. So we end up, but then it is that point when to stop. As soon as you're thinking it's a little bit heavy, stop okay so we've done this area down here i'm just going to add just a fraction of this just to the these tails i'm going to put in a little bit of sooting okay and this underside does get it quite heavily all right so just going to add a little bit of black down here but because it's thin it should all blend We're looking for nice blends as it goes through okay so you end up with something like that, which I know a lot of people might think that's quite heavy weathering and everything else, but what we've got to do is get a balance. Now the Phantom underneath, as we know, is extremely grimy. So that's what we've gone for something like that. The top half, obviously we're all still nice and clean up here. All right, so if we just pop these under here to hold it. So what we want to do is exactly the same, okay, as we're working our way through. So we're just gonna follow these lines now I might add, I've actually given this a, we've actually given this a flat coat right the way over to seal down. So this will help it stick on. You might notice it's a lot more flatter. What we're doing now is gonna go around and just follow all those panel lines just for a moment, perhaps with the ones we've lost. Now the recessing, the details on this are quite muted, okay? So some of them haven't come out particularly well. You've got an option. You could go back right and rescribe them all in, or you can just post shade through and have some with, some out, and you go through. So what we're going to do now is just pick out little points of interest. So we're just a little air pressure, little bits coming back. Okay, then once that's on, we're just going to work a, a random pattern just down in here, just to darken off, keeping it nice and random. And that's it, okay? It's looking good, so we'll move away. So we're just gonna do round this top part. So we've got this, we know we've got an access panel running down the side here. Also, we're just gonna work it quite heavily along the walkway. Okay, 
same, certainly around the crew, access areas, both sides. And then again, just random, going all over. Back end, obviously a bit sooty, as we know, tails. These bits at the top. Okay, so there we go. You get an idea now of obviously the before and after type of look. So obviously this side not done at all, and then working our way through. So we're just flipping around to the other side. Okay, we're just going to do exactly the same. Usually better, which I will do in a minute. When you're working on wings and things like that, shoot the way you're going. And I'll show you just a couple of little techniques in a second. Yeah, this walkway, this walkway, we're going to go over it in a moment with a, like a, a darkish grey, just to give it a more warm look. But you say, for me, you probably agree, I don't normally shoot at an air pressure this low. Again, every now and again, blow it all off, clean your needle. Okay. Just going around absolutely everywhere. Now, a couple of little techniques you can do. First of all, if you take a hold, this is very low tack tape. To be honest, this is this frog tape stuff that is great for one off use, but it's no good for masking windows and that. But what you can do, take a little bit on your hand and then <clears throat> what you can do is actually stick it just down like here, it doesn't have to be pushed down really, really hard or anything else like that. Okay, and then that way you can keep yourself a nice little spray marks. Just like so. So when you peel off, obviously you haven't got it anywhere, so it's like it's coming out of the actual hydraulic lines and pushing back. Okay, and you can do that absolutely anywhere where you want a sort of hydraulic spray. trying to do is just sort of random keep it nice and random and have a think about where things would get grimy where they wouldn't all right and then what I tend to do higher up your air pressure for the last pass quite a higher pressure and just do a quick pass over everything just to kill everything down and give everything a grime look and it sort of just balances everything in there but there we go, that gives us something like this. All right, oops, Not tipping your paint everywhere. <clears throat> so there we go, it's got that sort of nice balanced look to it. Okay, so we've got a nice grimy underside, which I quite like that look for a phantom, about right to me, and everything else. Remember, you need to weather everything as well. So things like your fuel tanks, if you're doing those, your pylons, if you're doing those, the weapons as well, we need a little bit of weathering. Obviously, not, nothing as heavy as we've done here, but certainly try and keep them all on an even plane. That way, everything sort of looks right, if you know what I mean, okay? So as I say, when this is unmasked, we can do a couple of other little pieces to it as well. We, we can pick out with little bits of um, staining, as I call it, which what we use is the metallic paints and things like that. And we can actually use our finger and swipe them down and everything else. What we want that to do now is to totally dry off. Once that's dried off, we can give it another flat coat over the top just to seal everything down, making sure we're all happy. It's a nice flat finish and everything else like that. Then we can unmask and then we can really start bringing it all together. Okay, so we've got a couple of things on the go. We've done the weapons fit, and we've just literally sprayed them white, very, very straightforward, and then the tip's just done, done grey. The sidewinders, as I said, um, make sure you've got the right particular one. Uh, I can't remember the top of my head. This is the M version, L, M, L version, something like that, version of the sidewinder. Okay, 
Right, now the way they're in, as you say, you really want to make it a layered effect. And there's a lot of people out there and they say post shading isn't real and pre shading isn't real and washes aren't real and everything else. But we're trying to make a scale effect and give it a sort of worn look. And the only way you can really do that is by layering process. So you've got something like this, okay, and we're pretty much there. I'm happy with this grime, I'm happy the way the actual it sort of works and with the flow of it, obviously looking backwards and everything else. What I'd like to do now is add oil streaks and stuff like that. Now, back in the day, you might use things like ink, okay, uh, obviously acrylic paint, enamel paint, stuff like that. What I like to use, though, is the wash. It's pretty straightforward, you know, um, and it's safe, because if it does go wrong, you can get it out. Now, a couple of techniques for doing it. He says we just grab some pots of paint just to hold this up the right way. What we can actually do, if you take some wash, this is the black, so obviously we're just going straight with the black, and we've got the cap full just here. So what you are gonna do is just grab a little bit on the brush. Okay, you don't need gallons of this. Don't think you're gonna be spraying it around and flooding it around. But all we're gonna do, we're gonna make some little hydraulic type streaks. First thing you need to do is obviously work out where they're gonna go and how you want them. So we're just gonna put a little one just back here. Once it's on, we just put a finger and we're gonna drag it. Okay, and then as I said, same thing. It's just gonna be a layering effect. So we're going to put it in, let it sit for a minute, and then just drag it back. Okay, and as I said, you can keep going. Let it dry, get a bit of a bite on, okay, and drag it back. And we can get this type of effect going. If I drop this top camera down a bit, you can see what we're getting here. So what we do, we do it same on the other side. So we're going to get quite heavy to start with. Okay, drag it back. Perhaps we'll have a little one here. Drag it back. Now, depending on how quickly you do this, would depend on exactly how much drag and stain you sort of get with it and these sort of rear marks coming back. So perhaps we just pop a little one over here and one in here. Perhaps we'll have a little bit going on just down here. This is where the, the main fuel tank's gonna come out the back. Put some on here. Okay, it's gonna be quite a couple of big ones. Okay, we can just drag them all back and then again, perhaps we'll put some more along this area. Okay, in and then drag. So we can get this sort of staining effect going in, but as I say, it's sort of a layering thing. Now, the big thing is, if it goes slightly wrong, so let's just say we put this in here, right, and we've got this, okay, and it's a little bit too strong. Let's we put some down here. So it's very hard because if you wipe it, you can take it off. But see, it's a little bit stark. All you do, wet your finger, take a little bit off, okay? And then just keep rubbing it in, okay? And you can actually grime it in. And because we've got a flat coat, it's got plenty of bite to it. It's got plenty of grip. But don't forget, if it does go horrendously wrong, okay? And you end up you thinking, oh God, like I've overdone that. It looks a bit stupid and a bit fake. It's plenty of wet. <laughs> There we go, we can start again. And that's the beauty with this way. You know, if you're doing it with other things, you can be in a situation where you get lots of problems. But what you'll find is, if you go in quite quickly, okay, it wipes off very, very fast, okay? You can come in, we can make some staining. But the longer we leave it on here, and obviously you're building up layers, okay, you can actually make it darker and more grimy as you go through. So we're going to do some of these around the backs of these doors. Okay, that's a few little ones up at the back of the hydraulics if you find it's sticking a little bit much. And what you want to, you can do is let it dry out in the cap a little bit like this, okay? And then that way it will should come through. But you can put in this nice little streaking. Obviously you can Put bits where you want. I can say a little bit dark, we're going to wet our finger. I'm just going to smudge that all through. Let's have a little bit on here. Okay, and that's what you can do. You can sort of build up this sort of grimness by doing it this way. And again, if you're finding it's a little bit not working that well. Don't forget, you can water this down, just plain water. 
Okay, but what you can do, if we're just going to come along with these guys down here, we're going to put in a layer. Okay, and then we'll do some along here, some along. Okay, wet your finger, and you can come in with something quite heavy. But as I say, if you wet, keep your finger wet. Can just fade them out, but always going with the direction of airflow. Really, really important to keep your direction as you make your way through. So we're just going to put a few more little added extras just down here because we know how greasy and horrible they can get underneath. And there we go. You're giving that nice sort of greasy look to it. And don't forget, you can then switch colours as well. And another great colour, which is sort of my favourite at the moment, is this grimy colour. Because especially when you mix it. Because don't forget, all the colours you can mix together. But we've got this colour here, which is like a real sort of hydraulic colour. But we can just sort of streak that through. But it has that sort of hydraulic colour to it. That nice sort of grimy look. And don't forget, you can take this technique with absolutely anything. It works just as well on, on armour. Plenty on here. Perhaps some down these. We've got some leaking down here, but this grind colour, it gives you a great effect for hydraulics. Okay, so perhaps you've got some hydraulics off of these fronts. Okay, and as I say, you can just pop around. Take it where you want. I'm just going to pop this back off because we need to get in here. Okay, some more the front. But each time you're doing it, it's sort of getting engraved into the paintwork, as you can see. And because we've got a flat coat, it gives it something to bite onto because without a flat coat, it's not really going to work that well. Here, just down this area of here. So if we're coming out of these vents, let's say artistic license. You know, you can go as far or as little as you like. So I'm just going to pop some around this area, just down here. And you can keep on going really indefinitely, you know, just keep going as long as you like. I'm just going to put some down on this tail area as well, because we want it to look quite grimy and a bit hydraulic y. So we're just going to put a couple more bits down here. I'm going to let this dry on just for a minute. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just going to grab a few little bits. Okay. the type of effect we're going for so we're just going to do a quick mix with the two so we're just going to pop a little bit just down here just down on this edge down here just grab a little bit of a black so you're mixing the colors and then we can easily smear it down and grime And then you obviously can take cotton buds to tidy up and everything as you go. But there we go, that gives us our type of look, as you can see down under here. And then basically the process is just reversed. If I just take this pylon off, I'll only just poke them in. But just on the top, as I say, you can come in exactly the same. So we're just going to grab some of the black. Okay, so perhaps we're just going to pop a little bit just down on here. It doesn't take long, you can just literally just pop these in. Put this a bit down there, a little bit perhaps along here. But you want to get in before it dries, okay? And then again, wet finger. Okay. Sort of multi layer effect. Okay, too strong, no problem. We're just going to wet 
a cloth and knock it all back a little bit. And don't forget this is over a flat finish as well and it still gives us this particularly nice grime effect. So what we do, we're just going to do some little hydraulic bits going on just down in these areas. Okay, put some little one just down on here. Again to start, just going to wet our finger just to blend them down. What we want to do is just take a bit of this brown, this grime colour, just to give us that nice sense of dirt flowing down. Perhaps we're just going to have a bit along here. But as I say, you can just keep building it up as much as you want. Okay, let's just put a little bit on this guy. And so you just add it, take it away exactly where you want it. So that's it, so it's all very subtle, okay, but we're just going to work around absolutely everywhere with this one as well, grinding this up. A little bit too strong over there, again, remember, don't worry, we're just going to knock a little bit of that back, it's a little bit too strong. Okay, and there we go, we're just working our way through all these different areas, basically just picking out small little details. So have a look at your reference photos as well, see where it's leaking, okay, because they do leak, okay, and then you can just literally make your way along and sort of grime up and everywhere else. So really, it's just a case of personal choice of how these things go, so sort of perhaps something like these. Great areas to do up these. You can really work them one on top of the other. Okay. Individuals and work it forward and on these shiny surfaces you can really give these oily areas quite a, a tough time as you're working through the entire model okay just literally picking out as you go